Hello, my name is Karen, and I'm a 58-year-old woman. My husband passed away about seven years ago, but I still work. I have three children. Three live in different states across the country, each with their own families. I'm very lucky to have such a big family. One of my children, Zachary, still lives in our hometown. He met his wife, Sarah, at the local community college. I liked her, and though I didn't think my opinion was very important, I was happy if Zachary was happy. They got married quickly and continued their education in their chosen fields. After getting good jobs and saving some money, they decided to have a child. I was thrilled to have another grandchild to spoil, but Sarah was particular about when I could visit and for how long. This was understandable in William's first year, but it seemed strange even when he was six. However, I accepted it because every family is different. Before I knew it, 14 years had passed, and because I wasn't allowed much time with William, we didn't form a strong bond. We both loved books, so I always brought him some when I visited. One day, while I was at work, William called me, which was unusual since we rarely talked outside of family gatherings. I tried to connect with him as I had with my other grandchildren, but he always seemed distant. Grandma, are you free to talk? Yes, honey, anytime for you. Is everything okay? No, why are you crying? Did you get hurt? Is there anyone at home who can help you? Mom and Dad are here, but do you need me to call them for you? No, I called you because I need your help. What can I help you with, dear? I need you to save me, Grandma. William, what do you mean? Don't laugh. I'm sorry, Grandma. That wasn't what I was expecting to say. I'm not joking. If you can't help me, I'll find another way. No, wait. I'm sorry for laughing. Now, can you explain what you mean by save me? I need you to save me from my devil mother. Devil mother? What do you mean? She's not as sweet and nice as she seems. She is really mean to me when no one's around. Oh no, I hear someone coming. I have to go, please don't tell them I called. Bye. I was confused and worried. As far as I knew, Sarah was very kind. How could William say she was a devil? I didn't believe him at first, because it seemed like he might be upset with Sarah for possibly punishing him. Both Sarah and Zachary had told me William was quite a tricky child. But something inside me felt that William was serious. When I got home, I couldn't stop thinking about the call. It was strange for William to do that. I thought about it for a few days, but still felt uneasy. So I decided to buy a hidden camera. I felt bad for spying on my son and his family, but I told myself I was doing it because William asked for help. If nothing was wrong, I could just take the camera back. But if something was wrong, I'd need to act. I hoped a serious talk would fix any issues. The camera arrived in a few days. Once I set it up, I could watch live and recorded footage on my phone, which was very handy. After getting everything ready and learning how to use the camera, I decided to call my son and ask if I could visit. Hello, sweetie, how's everything? Everything's great, mom. What about you? It's the usual, but I was wondering if I could come over sometime. Of course, mom, is everything okay? Yes, I was just thinking we haven't seen each other in a while. Maybe I could visit your place one day? Sure, mom. How about this Sunday? That works. But should I check with Sarah first? I remember not liking it when your dad made plans without asking me. I know Sarah would be happy to have you over. Don't worry, mom. All right then, I'll be there around 7 o'clock. That works. See you soon. Take care. Even though I had another reason for visiting, I was still excited to spend time with my son. I rarely saw my other children except during the holidays, so it was nice having one living in the same town. The weekend came quickly. I got ready early, went to the grocery store, and picked up a nice bottle of wine and some books for William since he loved reading. When I arrived, they all welcomed me warmly. William looked so relieved to see me it made me worry again. He hadn't tried to contact me since our first phone call, so I didn't know what was on his mind. I spent the next few hours chatting with Zachary and Sarah. We had dinner and drank the wine. 
Eventually, William went to his room, since we were talking about things that probably didn't interest him. I excused myself to go talk to him. Sarah seemed a bit hesitant, but I insisted since it had been a while since I visited, and I wanted to spend time with my grandson. Zachary told Sarah to let me go and talk to William. When I entered his room, I closed the door behind me and handed him the books I had bought. We talked about the books for a while because he seemed really excited. I didn't bring up what he had mentioned earlier because I wanted him to start that conversation. Later, we talked about other things like what was happening in our lives. At one point, while he was telling me about his school, he wrote something in his notebook and showed it to me. It said, Mom's listening, can't talk about anything. I wasn't sure if he was serious or just worried, but I went along with it. We kept talking, and I wrote in the notebook that I had brought a hidden camera with me, and asked if I could put it in his room. He looked worried, but agreed quickly. Hidden camera. I found a good spot in the room to place the camera where it could see well. I set it up, started recording, and checked my phone to make sure it was working. I stayed with William a bit longer until I told him it was getting late and I needed to go. I left my scarf behind on purpose so I would have a reason to return. After I said that, I heard quick footsteps moving away from the door, which made me wonder if William was really in trouble. I didn't think much about it at that moment and hugged William goodbye. I went downstairs, said goodbye to Zachary and Sarah, and left. Back home. I was tired that night but checked the camera when I got home. I stayed up for an hour to read and kept an eye on the footage. The only thing that happened was my son walking into William's room and asking what we had talked about. William told him, eventually, I fell asleep. The next morning, I was in a hurry and didn't check the cameras. I only looked at the footage after I knew William would be back from school. Again, not much happened, and I started to wonder if William might have been making it up. I decided to wait one more day, and if I didn't see anything suspicious, I planned to visit when Zachary and Sarah weren't home and ask William to return the camera. However, that night, as I watched the footage while reading, I discovered what William had been trying to tell me. I saw Sarah enter his room with a stick, followed by Zachary. I quickly unmuted the video. I listened as Sarah asked William to recount his entire day in great detail. Every time he hesitated or stuttered, she would sharply question if he was lying. If she thought he was lying, she would make him hold out his hands and hit his knuckles two or four times. I watched in horror as she hit him more and more often. William was crying, and Zachary just stood there watching. I was shocked and upset by what I saw. I had always raised my kids gently. I believe that children are smarter than we think, and they understand when things are explained to them. I couldn't understand why Zachary was just watching and letting his son be hurt over something so trivial. I wanted to rush over there and stop them, but what could I say? They would find it strange that I returned just a day after my last visit. I remembered leaving my scarf there, which I could have used as an excuse to see William again. So I picked up my phone and called Zachary. Hey mom, is everything okay? Yes, no worries. I hope I'm not bothering you. No Sarah, and I were just putting William to bed. Oh okay, I just wanted to say I think I left my scarf in William's room last night. I set it down and then forgot it. Do you think I could come by tomorrow to pick it up? Why don't I bring it over to you right now? No, I'm too tired and I'll probably fall asleep before you get here. I had a long day at work and can barely hold up the phone. All right then, why don't you come by in the evening? I can't come then. I'm meeting some friends for game night tomorrow. Well, Sarah, and I won't be back until the evening. Why don't you come the day after? I need the scarf for tomorrow. We're having a get-together. You could come in the afternoon. William will be home. Oh, lovely. I'll be there around four. Good night. My heart raced as I made up excuses on the spot. At least my call had distracted Zachary and Sarah enough for them to stop focusing on William. But before they left William's room, 
Sarah said that William wouldn't get any dinner or any other meals until dinner the next day. I was shocked. The next day, I took off from work and prepared myself to talk to William. I was sure he wouldn't want to continue living there, but I needed to hear it from him. Before going to Zachary's house, I picked up some food for both of us. When I got there, William looked like he was about to faint. He seemed weak and hungry. Sarah really had not let him eat. I quickly gave him the food, and he ate it hungrily. I felt very sorry for him and wanted to help him. After he finished eating, I spoke to him. Did you see everything that happened? Yes, darling, and I'm so sorry for laughing at you before. I had no idea. It's okay. Mom seems so nice, but has she always been like this? The beating only started recently, but she's been starving me for a while. Why isn't Zachary doing anything? He's too scared of mom. He just follows her and does whatever she says. She always gets her way. Oh honey, I'm so sorry you've been going through this. But why didn't you eat at school? Mom doesn't send me to school on the days she doesn't let me eat. I stay home. She checks how much food we have in the house. If even one gram of food is missing when she gets back, I get punished more. So she's starving you and messing up your schooling. I'm going to do my best to help you, okay? I need you to tell me right now if you want to come live with me. I'll take care of everything you need and keep you away from mom and dad. Of course, grandma. Anywhere away from here will be great. I promise to be good. Just please take me away from here. I promise I will, darling, but it will take some time. Do you think you can handle staying here a little while longer? Yeah, I can. I've been living here for 14 years, so I can wait a bit more. I carefully removed all the wrappers and made sure there was no trace of food. I didn't want Sarah to make things worse for William. I helped William clean up any crumbs and double-checked to make sure we left the place just as it had been. I went back home and called Zachary to let him know I had gotten my scarf back and thanked him for being cooperative. Next, I contacted a friend who works in family law. I explained my situation, and he said that fighting for custody of William would be hard and long. He also told me that even if I got custody, it might be temporary, and Sarah could change her behavior and regain custody. I knew going to court might not work in my favor with the little evidence I had, but I did have one plan. I could use the evidence to get her to make me William's legal guardian. Sarah works as a counselor at a middle school, and I was sure she wouldn't want her abusing her child to become known and risk her job and future opportunities. I kept a close watch on the footage over the next few days as I gathered all my evidence and prepared the paperwork for a transfer of guardianship. I waited until the weekend to visit Zachary's unannounced. When Zachary opened the door, he looked surprised. Mom, what are you doing here? I need to talk to you and Sarah. Uh, I don't think now's a good time. Why? What's going on? Just family stuff. Hold on, how come you're over so frequently? Can I visit my son? I didn't think I needed special permission to do that. I didn't mean it like that, but it's just unusual. You don't usually come by so often, and this week it's been frequent, which is strange since you rarely ever drop by before. It's not really strange. I only came over today because I have something seriously important that I need to discuss with both of you. What's that sound? I had my suspicions about Sarah's behavior towards William because of how evasive Zachary had been acting. But when I suddenly heard what sounded like loud crying coming from William's room, I knew I had to act. There was no way I could just stand by when I was right there and could do something. I quickly moved past Zachary, with more of a speed walk than a run due to my age, and burst into William's room. There, I saw William sobbing clutching his face, while Sarah stood over him, breathing heavily, her face twisted with malice. The sight made me shiver. I rushed to William's side and asked him if he was all right. He just hugged me tightly, crying into my shoulder, while Sarah huffed and stormed out of the room. Once William calmed down a little, I took a good look at him. His cheek was red and swelling, his knuckles were bleeding, 
and there were welts on his arms, all evidence of being hit with a stick. I felt a rage like never before. What kind of monster would need to hit a child so hard? No matter what he did, nothing justified that level of harshness. I went downstairs to the kitchen, grabbed a bag of frozen vegetables, and went back up to William so he could use it to help reduce the swelling on his cheeks. Once I made sure he was somewhat okay, I told him that we would be leaving for my place immediately and asked him to pack as many of his belongings as he could. Then, I walked back down to confront both Sarah and Zachary. Sarah looked furious, and Zachary seemed like he wanted to be anywhere but there. How dare you just barge into our home like that? Sarah challenged. Isn't it a good thing that I did? You are hitting your child, for crying out loud, I countered, my voice firm. What I do in my family is none of your business, she snapped back. Your child is my grandson, and he is a part of my family too. You're hurting him, and I can't let that go on, I asserted, standing my ground. He may be your grandson, but you don't live with him. You don't know how he behaves. I'm just disciplining him. Sarah defended her actions, but her justification fell flat. It doesn't matter if he's being difficult, he's a child, and there are so many other ways to handle discipline other than hitting. You, of all people, should understand that, I insisted, my voice laced with both anger and disappointment. I don't believe in any of that gentle parenting stuff. Leave me and my family alone, got it? I'm afraid I can't do that. What do you mean? I handed Sarah the papers she needed to sign to transfer guardianship rights to me. Both she and Zachary stared at the paper for a long time before looking up at me, confused. I explained that they both needed to sign the papers or I would show the proof I had of them hitting William. What do you mean by proof? I set up a hidden camera in William's room last week. I have all the proof I need. Neither of your jobs would be okay with what you've been doing, especially yours, Sarah. If you want to keep earning money, I suggest you sign the papers. You are spying on us. That's a huge invasion of our privacy. Don't get me wrong, but I was only acting based on what I knew. I needed to make sure William was okay. Mom, don't do this to us. Give us another chance. I'll make sure it doesn't happen again. I don't want to hear it. I'm very disappointed in you, Zachary. I raised you to be better than this. You're just as bad as Sarah, if not worse. I'm taking William with me, and I expect the papers to be signed. If you don't, you know what will happen. I knew they didn't want to risk their jobs, so they didn't fight back when William and I left. I took William out for dinner and ice cream and did my best to comfort him. I provided him with a safe place to express his feelings and just be himself without fear. In the weeks that followed, I was granted legal guardianship of William. Sarah and Zachary said they planned to move to a different state and didn't want to disrupt William's schooling as a reason for the guardianship transfer. They did end up moving, which was a big relief for me. William is doing much better now and seems a lot happier. Knowing he won't see his parents for a long time has helped him feel safer. He's one of the kindest and sweetest kids I know. He thanks me every day for what I did for him, and I intend to keep my promise to always protect him for the rest of my life. Thank you for listening.